Hey, hey, you guys, my name is Stockton, one of the folks over at Better Than Data, where we teach measurement and tracking and strategy and interacting with clients and building cool stuff over there. What we're gonna talk about today is two ways to connect your looker studio report to Google's BigQuery. So there's kind of two main ways of doing this. One of them is connecting directly to a table and the other one is using a custom query. I'm also gonna show you the method of using a custom query on the GA4 data set and making your date range dynamic or making it respond to the date range selector that you may have inside of your Looker Studio report. So let's jump into that. But first, head on over to this link right here. So betterthandata.com forward slash mixed because one thing we're noticing is that as soon as this whole thing changes where GA4 becomes the new standard, the reporting side of things is going to be quite a bit more difficult. So what we've done is we've simplified it so that you have the full end-to-end -end piece of the data uh, base side of things, so the actual data using either a Google Sheet or something like Mixed Analytics or your BigQuery, and then the sheet and the report. It kind of looks something similar to what you can see right here. Um, in this report to, to restore some of your reporting that is not easy to find inside of the GA4 UI. So head on over to this, download, it's completely free, it's very valuable and can help your business like have something uh, for GA4 reporting. So go ahead, grab that. In the meantime, let's jump in and take a look at what we have going on here. So here's the website, here's the thing, you can download it, see how it works, all of that stuff. There's instructions, everything is there for you. Okay. So let's take a look here first at our BigQuery and our tables. So this analytics data set within our GA4 data project has a bunch of tables. Now, if you've enabled the GA4 export from your GA4 account into Google BigQuery, then you will have at least the events table. So this events table is a partition table. You can see that we have 67 days worth of data here. And then there's the events intraday table, which contains the like streaming data and that gets ported over to the events table on a certain schedule and Google handles all of that. So a bit in the weeds there, but you should have your events table, your intraday table. We can see that they're partitioned. These other tables here we've created, we actually created in past YouTube videos. You can go and check those out, but we have a view. So you see this dotted kind of ghosty looking one that's called a view. And then we have this one here, which looks like a computer, a keyboard and a computer on top of each other. I don't know, some database thing. That is a scheduled query. Um, so all of these, technically, we can connect directly to from Looker Studio. So let's go ahead and do an example of that. So let's come in here to our Looker Studio report. We're going to go to resources, manage added data sources, add a data source, choose BigQuery. And then here we can see all of our different projects. Right now we're in the one called GA4 data. We can confirm that by looking up here, GA4 data, as well as here, GA4 data. So that's that. And then we can choose our data set. Right now we're gonna choose this analytics one, and this is where you can see right here. So all of these tables inside. Also notice that these ones have the Firebase icon, this little yellowish kind of cool icon that is there to tell you that these are the official Google, um, Google export ones from Firebase uh, or J4. So there's that. So we can connect to any one of these. As an example, some things I've seen people do is connect directly to the events table and then we can choose this add okay so this will add the connection now that events table of the ga4 raw bigquery data is now available to us inside of google data studio we begin to drag stuff out so for example here's event date let's give it a nice white background somewhere here so just so we can see what the data is there and then we could choose a metric. So we could choose one of these metrics here. For example, let's choose, maybe let's choose event name as a dimension. So we got our dimension of event date, breakdown dimension, event name, and the metric, let's just do maybe an event count. Um, yeah, let's just try that and see what it does. 
Okay, so this will kind of give us a trend of all the events that are happening over time. Not super useful, but that's kind of the idea of what we can do in terms of connecting directly to the events table. I wouldn't say this way of doing it is overly useful. Like you can probably do some stuff here to make it somewhat useful, but not, not super useful. But that's one method. The other thing we can do is just connect to one of the other tables. So in previous videos, we've created the summary tables and things like that. So we could just come in here, add a new data source, choose BigQuery, j 4 data, our analytics, and then grab something like our daily events summary. It's partitioned as well. So use the event day range. But this is just the method of connecting directly to uh, existing tables. So we have another we should have another table here so where's that a daily event summary right there scroll down so we got our event date and then we can add in these different metrics all of the different things and because it's bigquery it is pretty fast which is really awesome so here's just another example of being able to connect to uh, instead of a chart let's do like a table there we go. Okay, so now we have our date. We have how many page views, sessions, view item users on that date. Uh, we could, you know, add in all of the metrics and things that we want to track. Um, okay, so that is one way to do it: connecting directly to a table. And you can connect to a standard table, you can connect to a view, and you can connect to a scheduled query. So that's the first way. The second way, if we come back to manage added data sources. Let's choose BigQuery once again, but instead of selecting a project to go and choose a table, this time what we're going to do is we're going to choose custom query. And this will allow us to basically paste a query that we would normally do right here inside the query editor inside of Data Studio. So let's choose our, our uh, project. So which project is gonna be billed for all of this all of uh, the, these queries that are going back and forth. And then we're going to enter in our custom query here. So notice how we don't have, we're not selecting a table, we're not doing anything. We have to define all of that inside of the query. So what I like to do is first come inside of the, the uh, workspace and come up with your query. So for example, let's say we are going to kind of recreate this session ID table. So if I go to details, I can actually just come down, copy this, open up a new one and paste it. And we can see what that data looks like. So we're getting event date, we're getting the event name, we are grabbing a session ID by concatenating the uh, session ID with the user pseudo ID. And uh, we're kind of producing just this raw table. The other thing we did actually in a previous video with this particular data set is we then summarized it even more. And we used a scheduled query to do that. So the scheduled query, if we go and look at what that query looks like, we can go check it out. So let's go to daily event summary, go to edit. And then here we can see what the next query was. So notice how this scheduled query is pulling from the, um, the view that we made. So we can see that this is pulling from daily event session ID, daily event session ID was a view, and then this one is producing additional data here. So we can hit run, just like this. Okay, so let's say though that we came up with this query and we wanna use this as a custom query inside of Looker Studio. How can we do that? And how can we utilize the date range dimension to only pull in the specific dates that we want that are relative to the date control inside of our report. Okay, so that is what we're going to do. So first of all, let's just copy this directly over. So we're gonna copy and paste it in. And as it is, that should work. But every time this query runs, it's going to pull all the entire date range. But let's just check this. Let's hit add, see if it is going to work as expected. Okay, there it goes. Just taking a, a hot minute. Uh, before showing that to us. Okay, so if we go to manage added data sources, then we should see our uh, data source here called BigQuery Custom SQL. And we can, in fact, let me just take this table and let's change the data source to be our custom SQL. All right, we have to reload the page. Sometimes you have to do that when you add a data source. Okay, so we'll reload the page. Let's grab this, choose our new BigQuery Custom SQL. BigQuery custom SQL data source. 
and we should actually have uh, the same result because we one of them connected directly to the table and one of them is running the query as a custom query inside of Looker Studio. So same result here. That's what we have, but now we want to make it so it responds to the date range. To make this query more efficient, we can modify the custom query to include the date range parameters inside of the request. So if we go to edit, edit connection, we can come back to the actual custom query here. And essentially what we want to do is we want to enable the date range parameters. So it's going to give us uh, the parameters here. So we have DS start date and DS end date. So what we're going to do is we're going to say from this table, where, where, and then we have to find our event date parameter here. So we're going to say where event date is between, and we're going to try just like that DS start date and DS end date. Okay, so let's give that a try. So what it's gonna essentially do is, this query is only gonna go out and fetch the data that is between the start and end date. So let's hit reconnect and see if that is gonna work for us. Expected keyword false or keyword null or keyword true or keyword unknown but got keyword between. It's because I put is. So don't do that at home. Event date between start date, end date reconnect and see if that helps. It's thinking, okay, so now it's giving us additional parameters and saying, hey, there's new fields, day range start and day range end. Perfect. Although they don't show up because those are like data studio fields that data studio will use. Okay, so here we go. Now, when we refresh the page and we go last seven days, um, not only will the charts here only show the last seven days, but the query itself will only be looking for the data in the last seven days. Whereas before it would grab all of the data, but then the charts would only show the last seven days. Now we've modified it. So the query is more efficient and only grabs the date, the data relevant to the time range. One gotcha here to keep in mind is that the date range is already formatted in our example query. So if we go back to our BigQuery custom SQL, go to edit connection, you can see here that we took the event date and this is kind of unique to GA4. So we took the event date property and we've already parse dated, functioned it to put it in the right format that we want. So capital Y, lowercase m, lowercase d with the percent signs around it. And that is the proper format that um, Looker Studio wants in order to make this happen. So that is how we can connect our Looker Studio reports to a Google BigQuery using two different methods. And if you're using a custom query, how to make the date range feature work by adding in a where between start and end date. So hopefully that helps. Let me know if you have any questions.